Hello and welcome once again to Loveland's Talking. My name is Andy Hiller. I'm the public information here for the city of Loveland and we're here with you, the public, as we are every month to share information about what's going on with your city government. If you've been driving down 4th Street lately, the east part of 4th Street, and uh, think you're seeing double because all of a sudden there are two major construction projects projects going on, um, it's okay. Uh, you are seeing double, but, you're sh but you should be seeing double because in fact there are two projects going on. Uh, the Chilson Center and now the library is under construction. As you know, back in April, construction began on a major expansion of the Chilson Center, and this month work began begins on a major expansion expansion excuse me expansion and renovation of the library so today on Loveland's talking that's what we're going to be talking about we'll be talking about the expansion and, and renovation what led up to it the current use of the library uh, what the project will cost how big the project is and most importantly what you the community will enjoy when the project is completed all the benefits and features that you'll find in the new and, and expanded library my guests today no surprise are library staff people and uh, we'll begin with Shane at the end of the table Shane would you introduce yourself uh, my name is Shane Adamson with the library IT uh, I have my hands in a lot of pots at the library, but basically if it's technology related, it somehow goes through me. Okay. And uh, folks, you, you may not see Shane very often on Loveland's Talking, but he's here virtually every week because Shane is the unseen person in the control booth that puts the whole show together. So it's nice to see you on the, on the other side of the table, although I'm sure you're much more comfortable <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in your normal area. This so, is a new thing for me. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> any chance I have to embarrass Shane, who's also my friend a bit, I always take advantage of that and he knows that. Uh, Marsha? Take it out on him, not me. I, okay, <laughs> he's easier. Yeah. I'm Marsha Lewis, the assistant library director. Okay, how long have you been with the library? 28 years. Wow, and counting. Right, yeah. Okay, <laughs> I'm just okay. going to stick it around for this okay. renovation and expansion for and sure. Ted, I know you're no newcomer. Yep, I, uh, Ted Schmidt, I'm the library director, and uh, I've been here uh, as library director for 21 years, uh, but I spent three years in the same capacity that Marsha did uh, in the late 1970s as the assistant director. So uh, I've got a long history with uh, Loveland. Okay, and you've both seen the library change quite a bit. Yeah, drastically. Drastically. <laughs> okay, well, another drastic change, although yeah. that kind of, can be kind of a negative connotation, uh, <laughs> is coming. This is definitely going to be positive. We're going to be mm -hmm. talking about expansion and renovation. Um, so let's begin with expansion. How big is the library now? Well, it currently is uh, 32,000 square feet. Uh, it was built in, uh, or opened in September of 1987. Right. And it was about, uh, oh, 29,000 when it opened. And then about 3,000 square feet was added in uh, 1995 and 1996 in the northeast corner of the library for the uh, computer, uh, public computing lab, and the media storage area, and then some uh, offices and library boardroom. So that was a, a small addition that was done in the late 1990s. So that they basically added the area where Shane yeah, spends Shane. most of his time That's right true. now. Yeah, okay. I appreciate it too. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> when he's good. not over here. <laughs> right, right. There, yeah. Okay, so that's how big it is now. How big will it become with this expansion? We're going to add 25,000 square feet in addition. So almost doubling. Almost double. And plus you're not only going this way, you're going up that way. In the new part only. In the new part. Mm -hmm. So it'll be... How tall? Just two stories. Two stories. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, two stories. So that's expansion. Let's turn to renovation. Here's kind of a picture of uh, today's folks in the library. Um, when you say renovation, what do you mean by that? Well, it it'll be totally different. Uh, the the entrance to the library is moving from the south side facing uh, Foot Lagoon to uh, the west side facing Adams Avenue and it's going to function more on a east-west Galleria uh, configuration that the public spaces will go off uh, to the north and south off of that 
and then there'll be a stairway at the west end of the building to go up to the second floor. There'll be some additional meeting rooms up there, and then Shane's new house, uh, the library IT area will be on that second floor, and that's going to be spectacular. The house of Shane. <laughs> <laughs> on the second floor. How can we get a plaque? It's literally <laughs> moved up in the yes. world. Yes. That's right. Yeah. All the, there'll be new paint and new colors and new carpet throughout, so yeah, everything I, will be touched. Okay, yeah. so kind of a major makeover yeah. on the interior? Yeah, I don't think there's an interior wall that won't be touched. Yeah. Removed or renovated in some way. I Getting see. rid of all the pink and mauve colors. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, before we talk in detail about the interior, let's go back outside <laughs> and take a look at the expansion, which means the new portion. And um, you guys can kind of describe what we're going to see here. Uh, a couple of, uh, well, we have a few uh, drawings here. This is uh, the bird's eye view, very much so. Right. Everything there in tan is the. Uh, New, new part of the library on the north and west sides uh, by Adams and 4th Street. And everything in blue is the current building. So it's going to kind of wrap, it's not just going to be an add-on to one side, it looks like it kind of wraps around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the best spot. You know, we, want, we were actually originally thought about going on the opposite corner, but it was going to take away too much of the Civic Center area and we didn't want to disturb that. Sure. Yeah. And the other, the other nice thing about this north and west uh, expansion is it's going to help uh, set the library very prominently and visually in people's eyes as they're driving down 4th Street. It'll connect uh, the library and the whole Civic Center area more with downtown by having this you know, library move closer to that intersection of 4th and Adams. So it's, it's, it's going to be a very... Uh, prominent statement of uh, the city of Loveland's role, you know, with downtown, its presence in downtown. I can't help but uh, say that if, as you drive down 4th Street, I really hadn't thought about this, but you're kind of looking at the back side of the library, oh. you know, <laughs> you know the, the other side is okay, but you got a little parking area and the truck delivery area mm -hmm. there, and as you'll see in a photo, in a drawing or two here, it will look uh, much, better. much better. Yeah. You'll have a much greater yeah. presence. Yeah. Um, Shane, since you're the two-story man, now this this, this is the uh, the the the, um, the cutaway with uh, two stories. Uh, yeah. I can see it's divided into different sections and everything. Where are you going to be? I'm on the north side, uh, right. Um, so let's see. see this. Get my the cursor east. to work here. Yeah. Here? Yeah. yeah. Right about there. Right there. That, that's oh, the, that's the, the yeah. That's the the far corner is the teaching lab okay. and then the long room next right to it is the computer lab the general lab and then um, my office is right next to that here yep and then keep going and you run into ted uh, there's ted <laughs> yeah and yeah. marsh is that yes. you yeah we're out there yeah, oh, yeah. Right in the board room. okay they like to keep tabs on me so they want to yeah. be close. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. but we also have a little bit south of where the cursor is uh actually more in that hallway kind of here no um <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll take a shot at it. Uh, we have this this very interesting space in in here that's going to be a content creation uh, lab, editing lab, for the public to be able to uh, uh, shoot their own video, create their own uh, blogs, uh, you know, uh, audio uh, blog, a video blog, and then uh, do editing in that room and then uh, uh, put it out on YouTube or put it, uh, create or burn a DVD of their own. So they can, uh, we'll, we'll have uh, equipment that we can lend out to the public and they can shoot a, uh, a wedding, you know, family wedding or a family reunion and then bring it in and edit, you know, there at the library and then burn it to a DVD or put it onto YouTube or whatever. I see. So, you know, this is a very cutting edge uh, uh, function that the library is going to be providing. I think it's also real interesting that you know we're we're hoping to to tie into people's history here in Loveland, and and uh, you know archive some of this material as you know a, a current example of life in Loveland. We have uh, audio tapes that go back into the 1970s and late 1960s of pioneer families and the second generation of the pioneers to Loveland. And now we want to continue that, you know, working with uh, the public to try to have access 
to their their family histories and and their stories here in Loveland. I see. So we really do see that local history function as being one of the most important things that you know we're going to be serving with this addition. Cool. Very very unusual. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. What are, okay, so this will be the the new entrance. Yes. Okay, and which direction are we looking here? Where am I standing when I'm looking at this? We are in the parking lot looking north northeast. and east. Yeah. Okay, kind of like the current parking lot and the current mm -hmm. entrance. So this is... Right, Adams is to the left and okay. the parking lot to the right. Gotcha. The south side. Okay. And... So if you can enter from the parking lot or from more from Adams. And this view? That is the north side of the building where we were talking... It will be closer to 4th Street, but okay. we have a four of those uh, one-story uh, porch-like uh, protrusion bays yeah. okay. <laughs> that will be the, from the children's area. The children's area, about, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. the children's area and the teen area with nice windows. So you'll yeah. really be able to see uh -huh. that there is fun stuff happening in the library. Cool. Okay. And, and also the back door, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'd be a much much nicer than what what, uh, oh, yeah. what is there now. Okay. All right. Well, let's move to the interior. And as you said, uh, everything will look different. Everything will be remade or or remodeled. Here is some. Uh, if my clicker works here, come on. There we go. So it went twice. Here's kind of a drawing. What a, what what area of the library is this? You're standing near the entrance looking down the Galleria toward the east. And so you're standing probably right around where you would um, check out the books, the circulation desk. Uh, so it's just inside the security gates. You've got the media collection, which is the DVDs and CDs and whatnot, and then an uh, entrance into the teen area looking down toward fiction and the um, local history genealogy room. Okay. Yeah, we're reusing uh, a lot of the current building, so like the skylights were redone last year by the city yeah. uh, over the circulation desk. That'll all continue. Uh, a lot of the walls that we currently have in the interior are, are going to continue to be used as they are. Uh, there'll be some walls that'll be totally removed. Actually quite a number of them that Shane mentioned earlier yeah. are going to be totally removed. But this area here uh, is, a lot of it's going to be familiar except it won't look anything like it looks now. They're okay. all different colors, uh, different art schemes. One of the, the neat things that we're going to have are these uh, uh, niches of, uh, uh, for displaying art. Okay. And they're going to have... I'm guessing that's what yeah, you're that's referring exactly. to here. Yeah, and it's uh, uh, two-dimensional. We want to we feature uh, Loveland history, mm -hmm. a lot of old photographs of Loveland, and that'll be kind of a changing collection. And then we also want to feature a uh, sculpture, three-dimensional sculpture, in uh, some display cases that will have lighting and, uh, you know, uh, case, glass, yeah. yeah, glass around them, too. So we're going to be featuring a lot of art and a lot of history. That's, that's very important to this whole okay. project. Okay. Here's, a, here's another, kind of like a similar drawing. I can't... Mm -hmm. uh, but, but I guess this must be the areas you're talking about for art yeah. and that right. sort of mm -hmm. thing and another... Yeah. Another view of it. Let's see what else we have here. There's. Uh, That's kind of the opposite, looking towards the west. I see. Towards the so, so here's towards the, the entrance. Here's the doorway, the entrance. Yep. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. And the children's department is uh, over to the right. Oh, back. Uh -huh. yeah. back. Yeah, through that doorway. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, even make way, the left there. No, way yeah, back the over here on the right hand side. Can you go past right there, that opening? Yep. Okay. Right there. Keep on going. That's all going to be the children's area. Okay. It's going to be a very large room. Uh huh. Probably about what, maybe three times the size of the current children's department. No, not three times. No. Maybe it's twice. Yeah, it's at least double. Probably twice yeah. the size of the current children's department. Oops, I missed one here. And this looks like this general is a, interior. Well, this is at the far east end of the library, mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to have a uh, kind of a quiet reading area. And behind that right-hand wall, there's a sign that says Lillian Patterson Reading Room. And then there's uh, a wooden kind of display wall that will have all the current newspapers and such on it. Behind that is a fireplace that will have a double-sided you know, glass viewing area for this fireplace. And uh, there'll be you know, seating on both sides of it, and people are, are going to be encouraged to be quiet in that area. 
and read the newspapers. Wait a newspapers minute, this is a library. Aren't you supposed to be quiet <laughs> everywhere? Well, no. yeah. That's how I was brought up. <laughs> exactly. All of us were brought up that way. But that's uh, kind of the fallacy of modern public librarianship. It's not particularly quiet. But we are going to have a quiet space here. We're also going to have some other uh, more quiet areas throughout the building. And it's, it's going to work, I think, a lot better for the public in terms of a mix of meeting rooms, places where you can have small group work, uh, because we're going to be adding a significant number of small meeting rooms and also some larger meeting rooms, but then also some areas that are, are going to be quiet areas. So we're hoping for that. Well, reflecting on what you said a couple of minutes ago, how you're going to have a a hip-hop DVD creation area <laughs> right next to Shane's area. It sounds like it's not going to be all that quiet in that Well, area. there's a big teen area. That's, yeah. That's, yeah, that's their own room. That's going to be room. exciting. Yeah. Maybe a little noisier there. Yeah, so there's going to be air hockey and pool tables. And no, they'll like have that. Wii. They'll have Wii game, uh, you know, gaming. Oh, cool. Center, guitar Hero. Uh, guitar Hero. They'll have all kinds of gaming areas. They'll yeah. have a computer uh, area for the teens. Uh, as well as study tables. Now, if that Excuse is... Excuse me? That's, <laughs> it, it, yeah, it, it, it might be considered quaint, but, okay. uh, right. but we are going to provide them and okay. we'll encourage the students to study, these teens to study. Okay, all right, okay. Well, that's, that's, that's what's ahead. Um, the library is a pretty busy place now, I presume, which is what fosters all of this, right? Mm -hmm. Here are some numbers on here. Uh, 760,000 items borrowed. And on top of that, there were probably another 100,000 that were used last year in the building, didn't get checked out, but the staff still had to, you know, reshell them, uh, you know, make them available and all that. So we do, um, you know, upwards to a million items a year are getting, are getting used, you know. Coming and going. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But, um, it's a very busy place, uh, and not just for a city our size. Um, the programs that uh, the library staff provide each year, I think last year we had over 1,100 programs uh, from birth through, we say age 100, but if anybody's over 100, they're sure welcome to come. <laughs> but uh, uh, we had over uh, 30, I think it was over 35,000 people attend all of those programs uh, at, you know, that were put on. Some were at the library, some were out at the lagoon, uh, some were programs that were done. Traveler Story Tell oh, in the Park. Yeah, 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 that was a very popular program last summer and continues this summer to be very popular too. So there's a lot of things happening uh, in terms of programs as well as, you know, items being borrowed, uh, reference questions answered, um, all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot happening. Well, if there was a lot happening, you ain't no. seen nothing yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what we're about to go through is five slides of basically new things and new features, etc. Um, let's let's take a look at slide number one and pick out uh, uh, a couple that uh, that you want to mention here. Well, you know, we we as we kind of evolved this plan over kind of the last ten years. We didn't intentionally want to say we were going to provide, you know, the state-of-the-art library. That, that's not what, uh, in fact, we're all fairly traditional, except for maybe Shane. Yeah. <laughs> but he's a lot younger. But mm -hmm. in any of that, you know, we, we, we want to keep providing uh, what people have used libraries for, you know, which is borrowing everything, you know, all the material that we have. We're going to continue to do that in spades because we'll have a lot more space we're going to be able to, to shelve a lot more. Uh, instead of having to get rid of one item for every item that we would add each year, we're actually going to have year, you know, years and years of growth on the shelving that we're going to be adding because the space is going to be that much greater. Uh, so the collection is going to grow. But also we're going to have these meeting rooms, these additional meeting rooms uh, upstairs. Uh, so we're going to be able to do more public programming and attract more age groups. You know, Shane can talk about uh, the computer lab and, and those kind of things. But, you know, the, the uh, content creation lab, I think, is going to be cutting edge. Um, Shane. 
turn it over to you. Okay. <laughs> we do have uh, three rooms upstairs, the three technology areas upstairs. This is a little ahead in our slides, but we'll go through it now. <laughs> uh, we'll go okay. over it again. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, what? what? We'll, 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 get to, right. we'll, we'll talk about the last one on my slide. Okay. okay. I don't want to get you out of I'm one sorry. Of okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm easily confused. <laughs> All right. So let's, let's um, click again here. Um, uh, a few more things. The one that strikes me is, is item number two there. Uh, not only will it be more meeting rooms and, and new high tech things, but uh, the traditional things such as you talked about mm -hmm. will increase as well. Yep. Well, I'm excited about that, but I'm especially excited about the first one there, the LEED okay. certification. We are going to be energy efficient and get, uh, we hope, at least LEED certified, if not LEED Silver certified, and that's leadership in energy efficient design. So we're really working to have uh, the, the first LEED building in the city government of Loveland. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Particularly proud of that. Okay. And of course, the drop off, drop off and drive through area, and as we mentioned already, a really nice space for the teens and tweens. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. All right. All right. This looks like a Shane bullet. Right here <laughs> yeah. at the top. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. It definitely is. We're very excited. We have um, three. We're t we're making a commitment with providing computer access to the public. And right now we have about 23 computers in the library now that the public can come in and use, access the internet, job searching, resume building, whatever it is they want. We see about 86,000 a year just on those 23 computers. Holy cow, 86,000 uses? Yeah. Of 23 computers? Yeah, it's wow. about 150 a day, uh, something like that. Yeah. It's, it's quite a few. And then you add in the wireless and, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. It's quite a few. But we're going to expand that a little bit. Uh, the upstairs, we're going to have three separate areas. Our first one is the main lab. Uh, we're calling it the iExplore lab. We're taking a little li liberty with the uh, you know, iPod, iMac, and the kind of stuff and saying the uh, iExplore. It's going to have 50 computers available uh, whenever the library is open for the public to come in and use as they wish. Uh, next to that, we have a 15-person uh, classroom, which we're calling the iLearn lab. Okay. Very uh, consistent. Uh, and we're going to hold our, we have classes now that we give um, only two a month, you know, because by now we're sharing our classroom with our regular lab. And so we, it's kind of a balance. Do we close down the lab to teach the classes, but then we're kicking out people who want to use it. So sure. it's, it's a balance in that. But now we're going to have a dedica dedicated classroom. So not only will we have our classes, but we're hoping that outside agencies will come in and teach classes for the public for free. Uh, we have a few people already interested in doing so. Excellent. So that should be good. Excellent. And then one of Ted's favorite uh, rooms in the building is the uh, Media Creation Lab, the video and audio editing where people could do, create their own little videos and put them up on YouTube or podcasting or whatever it is they want to do. And we're call, calling that the iCreate Lab. So we have okay. iLearn, iExplore, and the iCreate Labs. I like that. Yeah, like that. we're yeah, that works. very excited. That works. That works. Okay, let's see what we have here. Oh, children's. Yeah, one of our largest use areas of the library is the children's area. Mm -hmm. We do seven story times a week plus a couple programs for the children under two and a half and a caregiver. So that whole area is expanding um, and have exciting things going on there as well as quiet reading rooms, larger restrooms in the children's department yeah. and things. So. Yeah, okay. And we're actually going to have places. a... Uh, quiet places. Well, yeah, we're going to have a, a homework help area yeah. in that uh, children's service area mm -hmm. that'll have a, a computer lab and uh, uh, just kind of study tables. And we're hoping to develop, you know, kind of a cadre of uh, volunteer uh, teachers to work with kids after school and have that separate room that'll be kind of on the west edge of the children's area uh, as a, uh, a homework help center, evenings, after school, weekends. Yeah. And uh, you know, I think that's gonna be a real interesting Is piece Is there anything well. like that currently? In the library? Yeah. No, uh, <laughs> no, no. Okay. So this is, this is something different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Cool. And? Well, um, we have a couple of new things on this slide. We, we are increasing the number of 
public programming rooms that we have. Right now we really just have one space that people can come in in a large group and, and use. Um, but we're going to add, there will be two more upstairs and then there are some individual study rooms uh, around the library, I believe. Will these be all different sizes to accommodate? Mm -hmm. different, different sizes, sizes and they have really? dividers. You could even go even oh, smaller if you wanted. Uh -huh. and They have a projector with a screen yeah. and, and all that kind of stuff. And we also have a uh, local history and genealogy room where people can go in and use our online databases, HeritageQuest or Ancestry.com and do a family tree or whatever it is that they like to do. It's a very popular thing, but we just don't have a big enough space or any dedicated space for it. And I thought that I had heard that there was a local society, genealogy society, that we're going to dedicate some time or volunteer some time in that room. Right. Yeah, that? yeah, the county, Larimer County uh, Genealogical Society is partnering with the library and they'll provide uh, some volunteer help to get people started in doing genealogical research. Um, and, and that's very exciting. Um, we have, you know, this wonderful wealth of uh, local history information, uh, uh, card catalogs full of three by five cards of an index to the Reporter Herald that wow. goes back to the 18, or 1870s. 70s. Yeah, the 1870s. And that's growing. Uh, we had the addition of uh, Zethel Gates, all of her research and her papers. That's been indexed. Her photograph collection, which goes back to um, uh, oh shoot, I can't remember his name. Mariana Medina. Well, no, 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 no. The person who started the museum here in town, not Henry. Dun 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 something. Yeah. <laughs> he oh. does started the museum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, how embarrassing. But anyway, that, it goes back to that. But also, Ken Jessen is uh, donating all of his papers for his historical research, and that's going to be indexed. So we're we're going to have a, a tr just a wealth of material on Loveland history and names and and. Uh, uh, tapes of people talking about their families and as I said before we want to build on that and continue uh, the library's role as, as, as kind of a repository for the written history of Loveland keep building on that sounds like something uh, I've not encountered before and certainly on, on a pretty pretty grand scale oh yeah yeah it's it's going to be techno oh okay <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Well, we've talked about the size of the building and all these features, the big building, number of new features, number of new computers, etc. I bet the price tag is a pretty sizable number also. I know it is. <laughs> so, um, leading into this slide, this is what it's going to cost approximately? Well, and that was, uh, you know, the, the original estimate on this. Um, the bidding environment that uh, the library and the city of Loveland found itself a number of years ago uh, really kind of belied that number. Um, uh, the cost for the architectural firm that's, that's just provided first-rate service throughout the whole project and now we've had the uh, bids uh, from the construction company and those uh, bids came in significantly below what we anticipated we're still having kind of a third part of this, uh, all of the furnishings that are going to be replaced, although we are trying to reuse as much as we can from the existing building, but there will be some new furniture, uh, some new shelving, things like that that we're going to be purchasing. We still haven't bid that out, so we don't know what the total cost would be, but it'll, be, it'll actually be significantly less than the $9.7 million. Wait a minute, this is a government project. You can't come in under budget. <laughs> oh, we will. We and I suppose well, you're expected to come in on time, too. <laughs> before, uh, even before. before. Oh, sure, before. sure. Before. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, where is all this money coming from? I know on this next slide shows a significant portion. The uh, There's a local group. You want to speak about that? That well, the has friends, raised a lot of money? The Friends of the Library Foundation has been wonderful in being able to fundraise 1.4 million dollars of a two million dollar goal in this economy. They kicked off their um, campaign just about the time the economy really tanked. So they've been very fortunate to uh, be able to get grants and a variety of 
sources, local donations. They're still taking money. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, the number to call. Is yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Uh, still doing events. They had a recently had a garage sale, and they've had film series and uh, lots of different events. Proceeds from the book sale. A lot of things have gone toward the capital campaign. So we're very fortunate to have a friends of the library that have raised some of the money. And these are just local citizens. I mean, there's no direct tie to the library They're or the city government volunteers. or anything. Volunteers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Really remarkable. So it's people with it with interest and friends of the library, <laughs> right. as the name said. Okay. The, the the one on the bottom, the bullet here, you kind of mentioned before. That's the uh, uh, lead uh, mm-hmm. money. Yeah. We we did get some federal stimulus money for lead for energy efficiency. Okay. And the state. And the state Department of Local Affairs money also okay. asked questions okay. about how energy efficient you were going to be. That was money from um, mining and minerals and oil extraction fees that the okay. state gets. So, so yeah, definitely interested in the lead certification and um, trying to be frugal. We get points for reusing uh, some of the equipment, and actually we're going to be using some of the stone that was used in the, that was torn down with the Larimer County Courthouse in Fort Collins huh. a few years ago when really? they remodeled, so we'll be able to use some of that stone. And So we're going to keep history and yeah. and looking to the future both. Okay. Well, on, on the screen here, that's a little under two and a half million. Uh, where's the rest coming from? Well, the the uh, library uh, has a separate capital expansion fee fund in the city uh, that is is assigned only to residential property, new residential property. Um, so from we we pretty much spent it down to zero in 1996 when we did that uh, uh, 3,000 square foot addition on the northeast side. So from about 1996 to now. And actually, it, it ended about a year and a half or two years ago. Uh, that capital expansion fee uh, accumulated four million dollars uh, for the library on new residential property that was was developed. So that's four million dollars that uh, that goes to the project. And then the city council is going to use their capital expansion fee funds to pick up the balance. Then. And I'm going to try and you help me out with this. Explain what a capital expansion fee is. That that's a fee that when a, a project or a subdivision or a commercial development is created, mm-hmm. the development company puts <coughs> gives the city money to help pay for future expansion and police services and fire and the library and arts and, and all of that. So well, that, the that's impact kind of, of the new growth. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Thank the, you. The idea well, is that the the 60,000 residents who have lived here in Loveland have been paying uh, uh, sales tax and, and property tax over the years to, to provide the services where they currently are. So when you want to add new service, a new building, it's typically capital. Uh, and you have new people coming in. This mitigates, you know, their their impact on the, uh, uh, the the rest of the people in the city by having to pay that capital expansion fee. So it's you know kind of a, a fair share of uh, looking forward and having to provide additional service and additional buildings. They pay, pay their share. Okay. And the bottom line is that we already have all the money to, to, to yes. pay for this. And yes. We don't have to go out and raise taxes or sell bonds or it's, it's money in the bank that yes. we've kind of had in our savings <laughs> account, if you will, and, yep. and it's being used for, for this expansion. Yep. But exactly. don't forget the friends are still doing some fundraising. <laughs> Absolutely, money under the crawl. Yeah, right. Okay. okay. Um, so that's how much it's going to cost and who's going to pay for it. Um, you mentioned that uh, you guys have been thinking about this for a while. You didn't just decide last year that, ah, you know, we need to expand. Um, I think it's fair to say that this has been uh, in in our minds, uh, Marsha and mine in particular, for about 10 years, uh, that we had a, a nationally known uh, consulting company come in and evaluate the whole library program back in 2000, 2001. And uh, at that time, uh, the consulting firm said that given Loveland's population 
and given the scope of what the library program was, how many different things we were trying to do, we were short you know, a significant number of square feet back in 2001, 2002. And that as Loveland's population grew, it was only going to get worse. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, you know, the idea that we were having to get rid of uh, uh, one book for every book we added, that wasn't sus you know, sustainable and it wasn't a good idea, et cetera, et cetera, that we decided you know, we needed back in 2002 to start uh, uh, the ball going. And uh, the city manager, Don Williams, uh, requested that uh, uh, we get a, a program uh, a expert to take a look at the library program and try and help us understand how much we needed in space and where we needed to expand the program and expand the building. And once we had that in place, then city council uh, went out on a limb and said, um, you know, we think this is, is a good project, uh, but the capital funds are not going to be there. It's going to take a long time for you to accumulate all those capital expansion fees. And they were willing to take uh, the, the risk and put the, the wager out there, I guess, that if the Friends of the Library and the Library Board could raise $2 million, they, <laughs> they, would be willing, they were willing to accelerate, you know, when the project could begin. So that happened maybe three years ago, four years ago, that city council went out on the limb on this. So you know we've been, we've been working on this since 2000, but uh, probably in the last five years is, is when it's really kind of formed itself into you know, the idea of where we are now. We've been working with uh, Belford Watkins Group out of Fort Collins for a little over a year, uh, maybe 15 months or so now, the design. on the design of the building, and uh, we're we're just very excited about not only what it's going to look like, but how it's going to function and how it's going to add, you know, so much uh, new and exciting service uh, to to libraries here in Loveland. Well, this is about ready to mature from a concept and an idea. <laughs> to noise and hammers yeah. and saws. It, oh, it, 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 don't it, remind that, me. Right? Yeah. So wh what are you, what are you going to do? Shut the library down for, for a year and a half while you do this? Uh, put cotton in your yeah. ears? What? <laughs> Shane, Shane, I know you we're, we're pretty familiar with this. Uh, yeah. uh -huh. We're, we're going to stay open. Uh, the library's use, as you've seen. You know, it's, it'd be too hard to, too much of a burden on people if we closed for months and months. So we're going to stay open as long as possible and deliver the same service that we always do. Um, the, the first part in the building expansion part is really going to hamper the children's area. Uh, they've really shrunk down and moved over into the, what is now the Galleria, but, and we're just going to go through it and deal with the sledgehammers and the yeah, jackhammers jack hammers and the so, so building the, noise. So the expansion will be done First, mm -hmm. yeah, rather than doing, doing expansion and renovation simultaneously. Yeah. That's the, the plan, as far as we know. Yeah, the expansions first, and then when it's done, we kind of move in and up, and then they start renovating the rest of the library yes. as we move. And then will you kind of move back to... Partly, uh, probably, yeah. <laughs> we, have, we don't know exactly how... Stay tuned. Every yeah. week could be different. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, I put your name on everything. Yeah. You know, when, when all this begins. So when that chair disappears, you can see, you can, or it shows up in a different yeah. section. Oh, that's yeah. my chair. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, how, when will it be done? We're hoping for fall, 14 months. So if they start here in August, should be done 14, 15 months. So next fall. Fall of 2011. Mark your okay. calendar. <laughs> huh. well, we'll have quite a grand opening celebration. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe maybe we can get two for get a coupon because, as I recall, that's about the time that your next door neighbor's project at Jilson no, Center is supposed they're to be done. December of this year. Yeah, December of 2010. Oh, that's so, right. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're right. ahead of I'm, us. I'm a year yeah. off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm further off than that. <laughs> Shane will attest because he spends time with me. Okay. Um, Okay, so this fall, the Chilson, and next fall, the library. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, and an expanded parking lot that will right. be helpful to yeah. both, both outfits. Yeah. 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 yeah, okay, good, good. Well, we've talked about uh, a great deal. Anything else you want to add before we call it a day? Well, you know, we do have a website. 
uh, if you want to, you can get online and look at some of the floor plans and some of the features for specific areas uh, for the new renovation. If you go to the City of Loveland site, which is www.cityofloveland.org, and I'm going to say it twice before you ask me to repeat it, <laughs> www.cityofloveland.org, and there's a link to the library site, and you'll find us right there. We'll try to keep people updated on the disruptions or things that happen or things that have, have to change. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, program changes, whatever. Yeah. And the exciting fun things, too. Yeah, well, it'll be terrific. I'm happy to say that... Uh, I visit the library frequently as part of my job and see Shane and work with, with you guys, but I also enjoy coming into the library and checking out books and reading the magazine. And this, I mean, uh, a library is a fabulous institution, and this one will only be better. And it's just almost right next door to my office, so I'm going to be one of your number one fans oh, then as well as now. So. As long as you pay your fines. Oh, and you know what? I just did today. Uh, <laughs> three three dollars and sixty cents oh, before, don't, don't before you took it away uh, in, in, in handcuffs. <laughs> yep. He knew he, we were going to ask. <laughs> well, I'm glad to see it's going to a good purpose. Yeah. 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 So, okay. Oh, I mean, you know, on that subject. And, and folks, if, if you're not already signed up with the library, maybe it's automatic with your card to, to get reminders and things. Oh, yeah. You guys are costing yourselves money because you have this great service. Whenever my book is late, I mean, the first day I get a reminder, hey, turn it in or pay up, Fred, you know. Yeah. So, so <laughs> you it reminds me to go in and, and at least renew them, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then I get another a couple yeah. weeks. Yeah. So, um, you if know. If you have an email you, address and can give it to us, we send a reminder a couple days before it's due, and then one, one when it's one day overdue, we don't send the mailed notice right. until a week after. So, email but, but it is, is tremendously helpful because yeah, you, helpful you know, and, and you and you, you know you, you can go online and see if what you want is is there yep. and, and ready to be checked out. If if not, you can reserve it, you can renew it, all from from home. So you can exactly. even you can even interlibrary loan request materials from your computer now without you know involving the library staff. You can do it on your own. When you say interlibrary, what do you Borrow mean? from another library in Colorado. Things oh, that really? we don't have. Yeah, things we uh -huh. don't have. But you can, if you can find it on the internet at um, CSU in Colorado Springs or uh, yep. Jefferson wow. County Library, we can uh, try to get it for you. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Great. Okay. Well, thank you all. Thank you. I appreciate it. You've got uh, a tough 14 months or so <laughs> ahead of you. It should be a challenge, but uh, the rewards will be great, I'm mm -hmm. sure, when it's all done. Yep. And the re rewards will be greatest to the community and the folks at home when this is all done. So uh, continue to use the library. And if you're not a, a current user, uh, huh, wait, till, wait till the new library comes by and uh, you'll really have something to enjoy. So uh, thank you again for watching Loveland's Talking. We will see you next month. Take care, be well, be happy. So long.